Yeah, Global Connections. This is Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. We're going to talk about APEC. APEC is coming to California. Now, what's interesting about that is that there are 21 nations in APEC, and it's supposed to rotate around the 21 nations. And we had it a few years ago. It's not our turn, but it is our turn. It's going to be in California. And, and, and Russell Hanna is here. Uh, Russell is the guy who wrote the master plan for APEC last time around, and he is actively involved in bringing APEC to California and making it happen in the old USA. Welcome to the show, Russell. Well, thank you, Jay. Uh, thank you for inviting me to the show again. I know last time we spoke was like in uh, 2019 uh, when uh, Chile uh, was hosting the uh, APEC conference. And I know that uh, after that in 2020, uh, we had that COVID and we kind of had to close down or in terms of uh, go everything on viral and Zoom meetings and uh, hopefully the leaders could get together. And this year, we're going to have the APEC conference in Bangkok, Thailand in November. And I did prepare a strategic business plan for the, uh, the APEC leaders there. And hopefully, as you know, Thailand is our, our oldest uh, friend ally and a partner that we had and we had an agreement with Thailand in in 1832 and hopefully uh, we had this agreement of uh, economic commerce agreement which we would do import export and be able to trade with Thailand on an equal basis and uh, hopefully there's no uh, uh, prejudice or in terms of uh, a relationship and we did treat the uh, Thailand people and back then they had the Siam dynasty with the king uh, majesty there and what happened was in uh, after the uh, World War II Thailand eventually became democratic country and they wanted to close themselves out and they didn't get involved with the Vietnam War or any get they didn't even get influenced by the French or the British when they were colonizing uh, Asia. So actually, Thailand was one of the few countries in Asia that didn't want to go to war. So uh, they believe in peace and harmony. And uh, they do, the Thailand people believe in the aloha spirit, just like we have in, in Hawaii. So they're really friendly people. And mm -hmm. I hope their big success they have in Thailand this year. Because as in Hawaii, we have over uh, mm -hmm. roughly 3,000 people of uh, Thailand, uh, people that came here and uh, started businesses and uh, entrepreneurial type of uh, restaurants and all that. So, and they have their military, they participate in the RIMPAC exercise. And uh, so we have a good relationship with Thailand. And uh, so I, I wanted to share that with, that with the audience here today. Yeah, a couple of things though. Um, when, when is the APEC uh, this year in Thailand? We're already into September. So when is the APEC supposed to happen in Thailand this year? Oh, it's gonna be uh, November uh, through uh, all the APEC conferences gonna be November. So the, from the 14th, uh, they're gonna be having the, uh, the, uh, the leaders gonna be start coming in and hopefully the 17, 18, that's when they're gonna have the big summit with the, uh, the presidents and the prime ministers get together and discuss their agenda. And hopefully this year, they're gonna uh, be talking about uh, working together uh, getting our economy back on our feet uh, again, and hopefully uh, try to prevent the supply chain issues that we have with uh, uh, avoiding the recession. And, uh, and hopefully, you know, as you know, uh, Asia or the Southeast Asia countries are very sensitive when it comes to uh, supply chain issues because they're not as developed like, the, like we are in terms of developing nations. And we, can, we have our manufacturing power and we can always export uh, abroad. But countries like uh, out of ASEAN countries, uh, they're very uh, sensitive to those uh, the situation we have. Even with the Russian crude oil and the uh, the gas that they're trying to weaponize, uh, every you know, with in terms of uh, uh, using their natural resource as a uh, bargaining uh, negotiation chip. But that's what's happening in Europe right now. Because forty percent of the energies and gas and natural oil, the pipelines uh, are coming from Russia pipeline to Europe in the European Union. So hopefully they're cutting down some of the countries that are already shutting down the uh, pipelines that's coming from Russia. So they have to look up for the alternative 
uh, energy source for this coming winter. Uh, so that's an icon or the terminology you're going to hear is weaponizing using uh, natural resource as a weapon. And that's what Russia is trying to do right now. And hopefully, uh, as the United States, look at us, our crude oil, our gasoline consumption from uh, last uh, two months ago in July was like $7 a gallon. But now we're down to like uh, $3.70 a gallon. So we are we brought down the, uh, uh, the price of the oil and the gasoline at the pump station for our consumers here. So that's a good sign that we're not trying to, we're going to try to avoid uh, major recession or, you know, in terms of uh, inflation of the prices escalating. So, uh, uh, is this Thailand's regular year? Is it this? Is this year the regular rotation for Thailand out of the twenty-one nations in APEC, which stands for Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation? By the way, it's a, it's an odd name, and it, it never says that it's an event or a gathering. It, it's just Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation. But is this the regular year for Thailand? Actually, I don't, uh, in terms of the regular rotation, I know that they do uh, vote, the members vote where they should held the next following two years. I know that uh, uh, what happened in uh, last year in New Zealand, they voted to have it in Thailand and the following year in United States and in year 2024 in Peru, it's going to host it. So uh, the, the Biden uh, members got to get together and most most of the time we try to look into the countries that needs economic opportunity and they're uh, stable enough to host the leaders and we thought Thailand was the uh, good time for them to uh, have this hosting the APEC conference there. Okay next year the United States which is really out of the rotation uh, why is that why is the United States uh, going to be the, the venue for APEC in what 2023 when uh, it's it's not our turn, well, I think yeah, because I know that we, when we hosted in 2011, uh, when President Barack Obama was the president, and the following year, I, I prepared the APEC Master Plan and uh, when uh, submitted that to the committee. But basically, uh, I think that what the committee was looking at was the stability of uh, hosting this kind of caliber kind of conference, and I know that United States under this COVID situation, as well with the situation in Ukraine, uh, the invasion from the Russian forces there. Uh, all of all above, we thought the United States probably have a stable uh, environment to host these leaders. And I think that might be, be the major factor uh, under these circumstances that we're living in right now. Yeah, so is it confirmed this is actually gonna happen? The Biden administration is gonna support APEC and. Uh, California, I guess, uh, in 2023? Well, they haven't made an official announcement yet, but most likely, I know that President Joe Biden, and I know that our Vice President uh, Kalama Harris, as well as the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, wants to, and, and the funny thing, Nancy and Kalama, they're both from San Francisco, uh, they're natives there, so uh, I think uh, they're going to have a little clout in the political uh, decision making. And uh, I think it's a good thing for uh, California to have because they are the fifth largest uh, country more so, and even though there are a state in the union, but in terms of gross domestic product and the GMP and the sales that we produce, California is ranked as the fifth in the world. They're bigger than uh, France and uh, England in terms of gross domestic sales. And they're so in terms of uh, business opportunity, I think California might be an ideal location uh, to get everybody together this way. So what happens at APEC? What, well, you know, who comes, what level of leadership comes and what do they do when they get here? Is it all government or is it also, um, you know, business? Well, actually, good thing you asked me that. You know, I mentioned that before in the previous uh, uh, engagement or the uh, Think Tech Hawaii show that, you know, it is a voice of concern. Uh, we have a voice in the committee that uh, for the private sector and the government and we're the government leaders and the CEOs of the blue chip or the multinational corporations get together. Uh, we have a concern. There is a working group, uh, like in the United States, we have three uh, major uh, uh, leaders that are part of the ABAC, which is called APEC Business Advisory 
Council and they have a working committee and it's just like the United Nations. Uh, there's so many different committees from clean energy or unifying trade agreements for a uh, free trade agreement following the Bogar or Projara uh, trade agreement in the year 2040. Uh, we have uh, uh, medical needs or there's, you know, humanitarian efforts. Uh, there's different committees and, uh, you know, so we have a specialist that uh, approaches that and, you know, we get a good voice of uh, uh, intelligence and uh, cooperation from these uh, individuals and countries that participates in the APEC conference. And well, do they, do they make deals? Do they make deals and make business deals? Oh, yeah, obviously. Obviously, there's a lot of deals going on, you know, in terms of uh, uh, joint venture partnership or in terms of uh, construction, uh, like in the infrastructure arena that we're talking about bridges, highways, railroads, airports, uh, harbors, you know, infrastructure all over uh, in terms of construction needs. Uh, they all want to be partners uh, in terms of uh, working together. And I, I, every country, like in terms of this, uh, my proposal that I submitted on my strategic business plan was get involved with the Euro Asia One Belt Run Road initiative like China is going through. And maybe using, competing with China, we should all work together with the organization like European Union has 28 countries, actually 27 with Brexit, you know, England kind of pulled out, but they're kind of staying neutral right now. And APEC has 21 countries. So 28 plus 21, that's a big country, plus we got India and other, other countries on the side and, uh, you know, other countries who's not part of the union or in terms of the APEC organization, they all want to be part of it. And, uh, if they're gonna go through their territory in terms of land, in terms of your Asia infrastructure, uh, your uh, one belt run road initiative route, like the old Silk Road uh, initiative. Uh, hey, if the organization get it, at least everybody gets a fair share. Each country can have an equal representation. Well, let me without... let me ask you about that. So we have 21 countries in Asia Pacific that will ostensibly be there. They'll be in Thailand in November. They'll They'll be in California in uh, 2023. Um, you, are you telling us that uh, Europe with the EU will be there? Are you telling us that Russia, uh, you know, who is not necessarily our friend or the friend of Eastern Europe or Europe in general will be there? Are you telling us that China, who is more contentious every day, will be there? All these countries will be in California in 2023? I think in terms of representation, uh, I'm sure the working group will be there. We haven't isolated or uh, uh, told Russia uh, just because they went to your, their, their territory is different. Asia Pacific is uh, different in terms of the European continent. So we're not trying to, uh, but in terms of political arena, uh, we still have to obey the US policy of the economic sanctions that we gave and we, we care about the Ukrainian people. We care about the free democracy and the Asians care about being peaceful and uh, have unity and unification. They all want to work together in harmony. And that is pretty much the Asian culture, I think, in terms of religion that we have, the upbringing we have. The Asian people in general are peaceful people. And uh, I noticed that through my upbringing and my exposure and my experience I have with them. So in terms of uh, uh, putting sanctions on Russia and Vladimir Putin coming here or not. Uh, I'm sure that I don't think he might not even get invited. If not, uh, there will be some APEC uh, Russia uh, representation as well. China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, they get representation because of that one China policy. We're not going to kick out Taiwan or kick out Hong Kong. We're going to give Hong Kong and Taiwan the equal voice, the equal opportunity. And that's what APEC stands for until mm. otherwise. So, so now you wrote the master plan for the 2011 uh, APEC, which took place here in Hawaii. Um, I, are you writing a master plan for the one that's supposed to take place in the U.S. in 2023? Actually, I'm preparing a, a strategic business plan 
for California. And uh, hopefully I'm going to comply with all the memoirs of the, all the strategic business plan I prepare, even the nomination with the Nobel Peace Prize and all the thing, the resolution I prepare for North Korea with Kim and Yoon trying to unite with one Korea policy that I prepared a resolution that I submitted to the United Nations Security Council uh, on all that. So those kind of copies will be in this memoir that I'm going to prepare. And I might, might make, I'm thinking of combining a book kind of approach. Maybe I'll write up a book for this APEC conference and have a signing during the conference and, uh, and have the European Union leaders come to the California summit and meet the APEC leader. So we have 21 eight leaders. They have, they can do a group photo and they can have a dialogue and they can discuss issues and have a voice of concern. Not even the leaders don't have to come, but they can have some kind of representation uh, through the committee and organizations that we have here. Mm -hmm. And at least uh, we can plant the seed for the future of uh, the direction that we see. Eventually, we're going to have to see the EuroAsia come in, in, in place, but it's a matter of how we do it. If we're going to do it in a right fashion, in a fair way, for small countries, big countries working together, have an equal opportunity in ter terms of quality of life they're going to have. Uh, so for this, it's a better, it's a better life for a better men of our human re uh, humanity that we live in. So all above, and I think it's a, it's a good thing in mm -hmm. terms of global globalization working together. Mm -hmm. Some people take it negatively, but uh, to me, what I see, you know, that might be the future for uh, our human race here. Yeah, well, so what did they take it negatively about? What's wrong with it? I think in terms of, you know, some people think of supremacist in terms of, you know, they don't like the Asian culture, the language or the religion. So, you know, what we've seen like in the hate crimes uh, all over the world, they kind of blame other agents of what happened, you know, in terms of maybe because of the COVID issue, uh, I'm sure it has to do with that. With that. But, uh, you know, in terms like I'm Japanese American, you know, they got Chinese American, they got Korean American, Vietnamese American, Laos, they all these different kind of national Hispanic Americans, you know, uh, African Americans, you know, name it, Island Pacific Islanders, you know, they all get somehow discriminated in certain ways. So, you know, I just want to avoid in terms of, so in terms of your Asia, uh, if we can realize the, the differences and work together, that might be better for our future, but it's just mm -hmm. a, a vision that I see and that I prepare on my strategic uh, uh, business plan. Yeah. So, um, you know, Russell, uh, in 2011, um, there were states, state governments were represented. Certainly the state of Hawaii was represented. Uh, Brian Schatz was very active for APEC uh, back in 2011, and it was good for Hawaii. Regrettably, it didn't continue. I mean, as a, as a sort of a follow-up, ongoing meeting, then that was too bad. Um, but clearly there were states involved and people came from various places in the country to participate. So is that going to happen again in 2023? Will there be state representatives coming to California? Uh, I hope so. You know, when I was working on APEC, I know that when Brian Schatz was uh, Lieutenant Governor, uh, we did do the state office was in the uh, uh, Lieutenant Governor's office and the East West Center was the headquarters. And I was more dealing with the East West Center at the time being, and I prepared an APEC master plan. But uh, if I can call back when Brian became appointed as a, a U.S. Center under Governor Abercrombie, uh, I had to kind of take the torch and uh, represent Hawaii as APEC Hawaii. So I did prepare uh, numerous strategic business plans and even try to get the TPP involved in the Trans-Pacific Partnership, make, make Hawaii the headquarters, because that was part of the Bogart Doctrine, which APEC uh, uh, Doctrine says that year, year of 2020, all APEC countries must have a free trade area in the Asia Pacific region. And everybody, all the APEC countries was trying to get into either TPP or RCEP, Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership that China was pushing for and the ASEAN uh, as well, as well with the ASEAN. So all of those things were uh, coming in. And uh, 
so I think hopefully the 2023 when the United States hosts, I hope we can come up with the Indo-Pacific economic framework that Joe Biden came up with in this May. That includes uh, 14 countries, and most of them were all TPP members. It include plus two countries, Fiji and India is part of the economic uh, framework for Indo-Pacific Asia. So that's great. And uh, hopefully maybe we can have India be part of our APEC organization, have them be part of the 22nd member of the APEC organization. And mm. uh, they're already a member of the Quad, uh, where United States, Australia, Japan, India, and India form. It's a four-way multilateral kind of uh, agreement in order to uh, work together as a partnership. So what about well, the military? Is the mil the military had a certain presence in 2011? Um, is the military going to be involved in 2023? Oh yeah, uh, hopefully uh, with the RIMPAC exercise. Uh, I know that coast down to San Diego and up by uh, California, by San Fran, all the way up uh, to Seattle, up in north. Uh, they have we have our strategic uh, uh, command over there as the and so hopefully the military can be part of the RIMPAC exercise. We've been, we just had one this year and that was part of my master plan too, or, or in terms of getting all the APEC nation to participate in the RIMPAC exercise. So what happened was uh, we got all the ministers through the defense to come to Hawaii and talk and uh, work together in a political fashion and, uh, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of bringing diplomacy before applying uh, military uh, might over Asia. So we had the defense ministers as well as the admirals and generals during their exercise. So it was a good thing that uh, Hawaii can host such a high caliber. And we're like the NATO of Asia Pacific here with the RIMPAC exercise. Over 50 countries participating uh, on the by, you know, three years on a uh, turnaround. So we're, we're, we're a mighty state, if you want to call it in terms of military. <clears throat> Well, so is there any state agency, state organization, state, you know, official, state official, uh, I mean, aside from you, of course, uh, who is involved in planning for uh, APEC next year, 2023? Um, I, is, there, is there one agency that is cognizant of how Hawaii can interface with APEC? Oh, definitely. You know, you, you just hit the hammer on the nail is uh, Seattle, uh, the APEC National Center in Seattle, Washington. Uh, they're the ones that uh, come up with the agenda. They're the ones that coordinate with the CEOs, the corporate businesses, have the blue chip uh, corporate sponsors. Uh, uh, so, you know, we've got Microsoft, Boeing, Amazon, name it, Walmart, all the big national, uh, Merrill Lynch, you know, the finance and, you know, the insurance company, the accounting firms, and you know, we have, we have, we well, have is, there, is there any culture. agency in the, in the state of Hawaii who's involved? Uh, I guess just me it's with APEC Hawaii. I coordinate with APEC National Center and the uh, APEC headquarters in Singapore, where uh, the executive director is uh, uh, Rebecca Fatima Santa Maria. She's the uh, executive director of. She's actually the ambassador, uh, holds the title, and uh, she's our uh, our leader for the APEC organization. That's quite right a, a prestigious job to be an ambassador, a national ambassador to APEC, isn't it? Uh, at any meeting, for example, the United States would have an ambassador to APEC, right? Exactly, exactly. And uh, hopefully, uh, uh, you know, I mean, the matter of fact, we did uh, Marathi. Uh, Lauren Marathi was, uh, uh, she was our APEC, first Hawaiian APEC, Hawaiian uh, ancestry ambassador where George Bush appointed her. And she's pretty, uh, she, I see her once in a while at the East West Center. I know her father, uh, her husband is also a U.S. ambassador, Marathi. Mm -hmm. So uh, we do have some uh, uh, past credentials in Hawaii that has, and I'm just a newcomer still, you know, I just have only like 10 years experience with APEC, you know, that, that I've been doing my master plan and my strategy, but uh, people with the, uh, uh, people that work up the ranks, you know, we still have them. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that we have a lot of uh, scholars and uh, these kind of former diplomats in Hawaii that retired here. Yeah. Um, so what, what would you be doing 
Uh, I know, you know, you're writing the business plan for the 2023 APEC, um, but what will you be doing between now and then to um, organize it, uh, put it in motion? Um, are, are you interfacing with organizations, for example, the one in Seattle you mentioned, uh, with well, the, the federal what, what, what are you What are you connecting with in anticipation of the next APEC that is happening in 2023 in the United States? Well, I'm glad you asked me that. Uh, matter of fact, Secretary of State uh, Anthony Blinken asked me when we we're on his messenger that we talked together on the, on the Facebook and stuff. But uh, he asked me what I wanted to do, and I kind of mentioned to him, and uh, I've been kind of moving forward. Uh, is we want to make an APEC Hawaii delegation team to go there and possibly uh, uh, do participate in their trade show, uh, have a, a pavilion there, like an expo. Because I know when California hosts, it's going to be a tremendous amount of uh, exposure they're going to have. You know, can you imagine all those high tech industry, the financial industry, the entertainment, the sports, the Hollywood, and you know all those razzle dazzle being the fifth largest uh, country in the world. You know, in terms of uh, so they're going to put up a big show for us, and hopefully, if we can participate and be the like the host committee and passing the torch from. Hawaii to California since what happened was I remember like 2010 before Hawaii was hosting it California and San Francisco Chamber of Commerce had a committee to make Hawaii the following year with Barack Obama being the president so actually San Francisco Chamber of Commerce helped us to bring APEC to Hawaii so what I would like to do is in return we would like to help California have a successful APEC conference next year. And uh, if we can get all these past governors together and uh, be, they, can, they can do some kind of talk show or uh, speech on the platform that we're going to have in the trade show and in the Hawaii venue, like Governor Ariyoshi, Wahe, uh, Cayetano, you know, Neil Abercrom, Linda Lingo, even Ige, so on with Josh Green or whoever the next governor is going to be. Uh, they can talk about their ancestors. Ariosh can talk about the Japanese ancestor and how he was brought up. Hawaiian can, you know, John Wahe can talk about his Hawaiian ancestor and Island Pacific Islanders. And Cayetano can talk about the Filipino. And I wanted to bring one more governor besides Hawaii, governor from Washington State, Gary Locke the first Chinese American governor and the US ambassador to China. If he can participate in this conference and talk about the Chinese side of being the first Chinese American, I think that's gonna attract a lot of people in the Asia Pacific leadership. Oh, Hawaii has that, huh? They can get, give you opportunities to, for these Asian people to become somebody. And uh, that's what America is all about. You bet. And uh, hopefully. So oh, okay. um, we can showcase all that. I want to give you the opportunity to, um, you know, uh, summarize where we are, where you are, where Hawaii is, where um, the United States is uh, in terms of uh, hosting and being the venue for the APEC in 2023. Uh, what would you like people to know about? What would you like people to think about? Uh, what would you like to encourage them to do? Um, to support um, and to be aware of what's going on uh, in, in preparation for APEC 2023? Actually, I kind of already got the, uh, I talked to uh, some of the leaders already uh, for, the, for the Chamber of Commerce, Sherry McNamara. Uh, uh, she can do like the top of the hill, the Chamber of Commerce did in, 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 in Capitol, uh, at the U.S. Capitol with Maisie Hirona, the U.S. Senator, uh, something like that, but maybe in a bigger upscale, get all the musicians involved. Uh, maybe they can go there, show their uh, music venue and work with the Californian or the U.S. musician and venue that as well. And we can have the hula girls, the dancers to go there as well. And uh, even I got the Hawaii Tourism Authority. Uh, I just sent them an email telling that this is gonna be happening. We want the tourism to uh, support California and Hawaii as well. As a matter of fact, the Hawaii Hotel Lodging, uh, Mufi Hanneman, I told him uh, personally to follow up and make sure which hotel is the US gonna be hosting it. 
just like when we hosted in 2000 and we used Hilton Village. Uh, well, that's where President Barack Obama stayed. So California is going to have each hotel is going to be designated for each leaders and their country delegation. So hopefully, uh, hopefully they can do that and uh, go from there. And, you know, I just want to get all the leaders and the players together. I got the East West Center involved, Charles Morrison and uh, Richard Volstick and uh, Susie Lund, the new president, and even David Lassner of UH to coordinate with the universities in California on this venue. And maybe the scholars at the East West Center can prepare a term paper or some kind of research paper and submit it to the APEC company like I did. That's how I got involved. Mm -hmm. and uh, gives the scholars the opportunity to showcase their thesis or whatever research paper they're doing. Mm -hmm. And there is a venue for that. So I wanted to get that kind of people uh, or, you know, have Hawaii's representation. We want to make an all-star kind of uh, team here for APEC mm -hmm. delegation for APEC Hawaii and make President Barack Obama our president for that team. And go okay, forward. Russell, we're out of time. I'm sorry. Russell Hanra, the, uh, the draftsman of the um, APEC 2011 master plan, and who's now working on uh, the strategic business plan for um, the, the APEC that will take place in California, hopefully in 2023. Thank you so much, Russell, for joining us for this discussion. Thank you, Jay, and I hope it uh, works out, but we'll keep in touch and see what happens. Thank you. Uh, okay, aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.